Hey there, Sam. Let's talk about controllers in a deeper level. As we mentioned already, controllers are the functions that run when a HTTP request hits a route that we define in our app. So here in these two routes, the closures here are the controllers for these routes. We also mentioned that we can inject dependencies into our controllers. So here in the user's route, we're injecting the request instance into the controller by simply type hinting the class name inside the controller's argument. We can inject as many class instances as we want. For example, let's also inject the request class inside the second route here. And now we can access this request object anywhere in the function body. I'll simply dump it just for demonstration. And now if we go to Postman and send a request to our API endpoint, we can see that our server is responding us with the request dump and also the original JSON response at the end here. Now there's one thing I want to point out here. The order of the injection does not matter. What I mean by that is we can inject the request class after our user model and our code will still work. So let's go back to Postman and we'll send our API request again and we see the same response as before. If you come from a different programming background, this behavior might seem a little bit counterintuitive to you. Laravel is using its auto binding resolution feature here, so just be aware of that. Now let's move on. So as we build our app, we'll need a lot more routes than what we have here. Currently, we're defining our controllers as closures, which are attached directly beside our routes definition. As our code base grows, this will eventually become quite messy and increase the difficulty of maintaining our code. Now, the question is, is there a better way to organize our code? And the answer is, of course, a big yes. Laravel allows us to define our controllers in their own dedicated class. And the controllers live inside app HTTP controllers. And there are already three files in it. The post and command controllers, which are generated by the artisan make command in the previous video. And also the controllers base class provided by Laravel out of the box. Now, if we look inside post controller, we can see that it's a class extending the base controller class and it's got the numbers of methods in it. So we've got the index method, which is used to display a list of our results. In the case of our user model, we use this method to display an array of our users in the API response. The store method is used for resource creation. The show method is used to display a specific resource. For example, to get the information of user one. Update is to update a specific resource and destroy is to delete a resource. Okay, now. Let's create a controller for our users. I'll copy and paste post controller and rename it to user controller. And now we'll go back to our API routes file and refactor our code. I'll cut the content of our user listing routes and paste it back inside the index method of our user controller. My IDE is complaining because we need to specify JSON response as the return type in the PHP documentation. And then back inside the route definition, instead of attaching a closure, we'll get to invoke the index method in our user controller class. So let's go back to Postman to test our code. I'll visit the listing routes. And it's working. Great. Let's refactor the other routes as well. The next route belongs to the show method. Again, we'll do the same thing. Copy and paste the code in the closure into the controller. And in the show method, we can see that Laravel has already injected the dependency in the controller's argument. Let's change it to user instead of post. I'll select all and change them in one go. I'll do the same for the variable name, otherwise the implicit binding will not work. And finally, update the return type in the PHP doc. All right, once that's done, we'll go back to the API routes file and refactor the closure to use the show method in a user controller. And next, we're going to repeat the same steps for the store method. Update method. And the destroy method. Once we're done, let's test our code again. So go back to Postman and test if each route is working. We'll start with the get routes, the post routes, patch, and delete. Okay, seems like they're all working, which is great. Now, if we take a second look at our API routes file, isn't that much cleaner than before? Now, if you want to take this to the next level, Laravel provides us an easier way to define our routes under these conventions by using a simple helper method. 
code resource, where we can call it from the route facade. So five of these routes are based on a user model. The first argument in the resource method accepts the username. So I'll put in users. And the second argument is the controller for our resources. So I'll just pass in our controller class name here. And that is pretty much it. So this single line of code will replace the five lines that we defined below here. So we can safely comment out those lines. Now to verify if we have defined this route successfully in Laravel, we can go to our terminal and type in php artisan route list. This command will list all the routes in our app. So as you can see here, we've got the API endpoint for our users all set up and configured by the route resource helper method. However, there's one issue. If you look closely, the resource method has added two extra endpoints, a create route and edit route. The create route is included to show the form to create a new user. And the edit route is to show the form to edit a particular user. We don't actually need these two endpoints when we create an API server because we don't need to worry about the user interface at all in the context of an API server. So to resolve this issue, Laravel actually provides us another variant of the resource method for API server, and it is called API resource. And now let's go back to our terminal again, run PHP Addison route list again, and the correct and added endpoints are now gone. Personally, I don't like defining my API routes using the resource helper method. The reason is because it seems a bit magical to me. It is not obvious enough for me to know what routes are being defined under this method. Sure, it is nice and convenient, but the convenience comes with the expense of maintainability and flexibility because we're locked into the convention and we can't easily tweak the route definition. In contrast, these five lines of code takes a longer time to write. However, as the maintainer of the code, I can tell right away what they are doing without digging into the documentation. So this route provides more clarity and flexibility in the long run. In the next lesson, we'll talk about the best practices to organize our routes so we can build a robust, maintainable API server that can last for a long time. I'll see you there. Key takeaway for this lesson, controller is a function that runs when a HTTP request hits a route. We can delegate our routes controller into a dedicated Laravel controller class. There are five main methods in a controller class. By convention, the index method displays a list of resources. The store method creates a new resource. The show method displays a specific resource. The update method updates a specific resource and destroy deletes a specific resource. The resource route helper method enables us to easily define API routes. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.